Welcome to our review on nutrient cycling. So the first thing we need to consider is what's happening in an ecosystem with regards to these nutrients. So when we think about our plants, they're going to take up minerals that they need from the soil. Those are then passed on to animals when the plants get eaten. And then when organisms die, it gets returned back to the soil by the decomposers. So we've got this little cycle that then goes round and round. Now, on the right hand side there, you can see a little diagram just summarising what we see happening. So we start off with the inorganic molecule or ion at the top there. That's one of the non-living components because obviously they're just molecules or ions, they're not living things. Those are then absorbed by our producers and they then get changed into parts of the plant. So they'll be changed into things like the proteins, the carbohydrates, etc. So at that point, we're in our living component. Those producers will be eaten by our consumers through that process of feeding and digestion. So they become then the organic molecules in our consumers. And then when the producers or the consumers die, then they become the organic molecules in our decomposers until they undergo the process of decomposition, returning it back to those inorganic molecules and ions. So we're going to look at three important materials that are cycled through our environment. First one, carbon, which is actually the most common element in our organisms. And the carbon is used to make fats, proteins, carbohydrates, DNA, etc. Second one is nitrogen, which is used to make DNA and proteins. And then our third one is water, which is one of those essential components of our living things that actually allows them to survive. So the first cycle we're going to look at is the nitrogen cycle. And you can see it summarized in the diagram on the left there. Now, this looks quite complicated, but the reality is if you remember what four key microbes do, then you're a lot of the way there. So your first microbe are the decomposers. And decomposers, remember, are bacteria and fungi. And these are going to change proteins into ammonia. And you can see them on the right hand side of the diagram there. Second type of bacteria are the nitrifying bacteria. And these are going to change that ammonia into nitrates in the soil. And we can see those in the bottom left. Third type of microbe are the nitrogen fixing bacteria. And these will take the nitrogen in the air, which is completely useless to our plants because they can't actually take up nitrogen themselves. They can only take up nitrates. So our nitrogen fixing bacteria take the nitrogen and turn it into nitrates. And we quite often find that within the roots of certain plants, such as the legumes, then they've actually got these little nodules on there which contain these nitrogen fixing bacteria so that we've got that mutualistic relationship between the nitrogen fixing bacteria and the pea plant, for example. And that means that they will combine that nitrogen with oxygen to form the nitrates and those nitrates are then used by the plant. The last type of bacteria we've got there, the denitrifying bacteria, these just change the nitrates into nitrogen. So if we look at the cycle on the left, now we've got an overview of our four types of bacteria. If we start with nitrogen in the air at the top. So the nitrogen fixing bacteria change the nitrogen into nitrates. Those nitrates are then absorbed through the roots of the plant in the water so that the plant has then taken them up. They change that into protein. When the animals then eat the plant, the plant protein is taken into the animals and converted into animal proteins. If either the plant or animal dies, then they undergo the process of decay as a result of our decomposers, the bacteria and the fungi, where it's changing the proteins into ammonia. That ammonia is then converted into nitrates by the nitrifying bacteria in the soil and back into the plants it goes. Also, what we can see happening is in terms of our animals, there will also be excretion occurring. And when we've got things like urine, there's ammonia in there anyway. So that automatically feeds into the part of ammonia and again, changed into the nitrates by the nitrifying bacteria. Our second cycle is the water cycle. Now, if we start off, first of all, in the clouds in the top right. So when we've got clouds that are laden with water, then we end up having good old rain, so precipitation. So what we find is that as the water droplets in the clouds get heavier, 
then it falls as rain or possibly snow or hail. But because we're in England, it's probably rain, let's face it. That rain then falls down onto the ground. And what we find is this process of percolation will occur. And that's where water is going to trickle through gaps in the soil and rocks. What we'll also find is that because it's in the ground, then our plants will be able to absorb it. We do hopefully remember the process of transpiration occurs within our plants, which is the loss of water vapour from the aerial parts of a plant, such as the leaves. And that means that the water vapour then goes straight into the atmosphere. Or we can also have this process of surface runoff where that water ends up in places like our oceans. Where you've got any body of water just sitting there, then the heat from the sun will actually warm it up and we get evaporation. So that changes our liquid water into water vapour and that then obviously goes up into the atmosphere. As that moist air rises up, it then cools down because the higher up in the atmosphere we go, the cooler it gets which means that our water vapour condenses back into liquid water droplets and that's what our clouds actually are. And then obviously as time goes on, as the water drops and the clouds get heavier, they then fall as rain, snow or hail. So hopefully by the end of this video, we now know what is actually meant by nutrient cycling. We can describe how nitrogen is cycled through the ecosystem, including the roles of those four key bacteria and we can describe how water is cycled through the ecosystem. If you're looking for a little revision tip on how you can learn these cycles a little bit easier, I'd actually suggest that what you do is draw out or print off a big diagram of them, then stick a little flap of paper over the actual processes or names, and then that means you can just sit there and test yourself over and over again on those different processes and where they are.